Now that Halloween is over and we're packing away all the party's decorations, it's a good idea to pack away some common bat myths as well so they don't return again next year. Now, myths are a common part of human existence, from wishing on a star, to crossing your fingers, to blowing out your birthday candles while making a wish. But many myths are quite harmful, including the ones that pertain to bats. People get concerned when bats fly near them about the bats getting entangled in their hair. The thing is, you attract insects and the bats are flying around you in order to catch and eat them. Don't worry, bats are expert navigators thanks to their echolocation. If you want a bat in your hair, you'll have to put it there yourself. There are many myths regarding the creation of the bat, and one such myth comes from the Cherokee Nation. They state that one day, the animal people challenged the bird people to a game. The animal people were quite sure they would win with big strong players like deer and bear, so when two small animals asked to join, they turned them away while laughing. Those same small two animals approached the bird people, but they didn't have any wings. Eagle felt sorry for them and decided to let them join the team. Eagle cut out some drum lever in order to make wings for one animal by attaching it to its arms and legs, creating the first bat. There was none left for the second animal, so it simply stretched the skin between its arm and legs, turning it into the first flying squirrel. Some religious texts help to fuel bat myths by portraying them as unclean abominations that are only found in places of dissolution and ruin. The New James Version of the Christian Bible, for instance, mentions bats in Leviticus as well as Isaiah. And while some bats are found in abandoned places, they're actually quite clean animals. Vampire bats, for instance, engage in social grooming, just like primates. One of the biggest bat myths is that bats are blind. This is due in part to people learning about echolocation and then believing it is the only way that bats can see. But not all bats echolocate, and even those that do have fully functional eyes and a great sense of sight. In fact, some of them have great big eyes. How could you possibly believe that this guy is blind? Something else people commonly think of when they think of bats is rabies. You are far more likely to catch rabies from a fox, a skunk, a raccoon, or a feral dog or cat than a bat. In fact, less than 0.01% of the wild bat population has ever contracted rabies. You're far more likely to catch leprosy or the bubonic plague than to catch rabies from a bat. The term bats in the belfry being used to refer to someone as being mentally unstable got its start in the early 1900s with American journalists, who liked to use the phrase to demean people who didn't agree with them. If perhaps you wrote a piece saying that someone was dishonorable and the writer believed elsewise, they would say that you had bats in your belfry. The word batty being used for the same reason naturally followed. Over many centuries and across different civilizations, there have been several myths about creatures and deities that drink blood. In fact, as early as the 1500s, there have been scientific publications that mention bats that drink blood. But in 1897, Bram Stoker published his famous masterpiece, Dracula, and ever since, the public mind has associated bats with vampires. Another myth that literature is responsible for is that of bats and witches and magic. For instance, Shakespeare's Macbeth features the very famous scene in which the three witches recite their famous spell. However, even before this came about, our superstitious ancestors considered bats to be evil in doing witches' bidding. Why else would they emerge from caves at night? Well, the answer is because bats are chasing after insects that come out at night, not because they're up to no good. There are several myths regarding what to do when bats fly into a building or what it means. For instance, if a bat flies into your home and lands, it means the man of the family will die. If it flies in but keeps on flying, then the woman in the family will die. If a bat flies into your house and you manage to throw some salt into a fire, any sick person inside of your house will not die. A bat flying into your house is also a sign of rain to come or a good hunting season to follow. Other folklore passed down through generations has said that to get rid of a bat in your house, you toss a horseshoe into the fireplace. Like the other folklore that's been passed down, this is not true. Simply call a professional and they will exclude the bats for you. 
Returning to the bats and religion theme, early writers and illustrators portrayed bats in a negative light due to their description in scripture. They started painting angels with feathery bird wings, whilst the evil demons had leathery bat wings. They even went one step further in some cases. Michael Patcher painted the devil presenting St. Augustine with the Book of Vices and gave Satan, the greatest evil character in all of Christianity, bat wings. Trying to pin down the origin of this one is just impossible. Bats are more closely related to carnivores like cats and hyenas than any rodent. In fact, they're so unique that they are in their very own order, Chiroptera, which means hand wing in Latin. This is because bats use their hands to fly, unlike birds who use their arms. In the Bible, bats are placed with birds in one book but with moles in another, and moles do look like mice. Some foreign languages even use this connotation to describe bats, like how in German the word for bat is Fledermaus, or fluttering mouse. But despite all these associations, bats and rodents are two completely separate groups. Folk healers around the world continue to prescribe remedies with various animal parts for different ailments. Many of them believe that bats can be used to cure asthma, tumors, vision problems, sciatica, fevers, or prevent pain during childbirth. Thankfully, advances in medicine have shown many that there are real medicines for these issues, so no one has to hurt the bat in order to procure its left eye to heal a wart. Hey wait, this one's positive! Unlike the Western world, China has always believed that bats are actually a sign of good luck. The character meaning good fortune or luck is pronounced Fu. The character representing bat is also pronounced Fu, and is made of the symbols for wealth and insects, since Chinese bats are insectivorous. Many old designs show bats favorably, including the five bats design, representing the five lucky gods and the five blessings of long life, wealth, health, virtue, and a peaceful death. The Chinese culture has been aware of how important the bat is for centuries. The bats of Luby and all their kin feel positively awful when people call them names, so if you know someone who is afraid of or downright hates bats, please share this video with them so we can change their heart and mind regarding these wonderful creatures. Plus, it'll save us a lot on therapy bills.